ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರ ರಾಜಿ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ವ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಗನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ವ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಗನ ಯಮುನತೀರಾವನಚಾರಿ ಪರದೇಶಭದ್ರಾ ಮಹಾರಾಣಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರ್ಮಿತಾಯಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಸೀತಾರಾಮ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಹನುಮಾನ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀಂದ್ರ ಸಿಂಗ ದೇವ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾಲ ಸಮೇತ ಗೌರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಜ್ಞಾನತಮಿರಂಧ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುಹುವನ್ಮೀಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಕದಾಮಖ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ಚ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನಾ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವ 
ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದಾನ್ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ ವಿಧಾಂಶ ನಮಾ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದೀ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ತಾಂ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ i will say a few more words about uh, sadachar maybe another 10 15 minutes and then we will proceed to sadhana part huh? uh, what we think who we are will be the foundational uh, consciousness that produces our speech and our actions for example roma harshana sutta's behavior uh, uh, or uh, devananda pandit's for example behavior you know these people externally they are very very profound scholars huh? very advanced scholars at the same time uh, the conscious there was some flaw in their consciousness huh? due to which when they opened their mouth or they acted with their body for example roma harshana sutta's behavior towards uh, balaram ji hain huh? or devananda pandit's behavior towards shivas thakur so uh, actually uh, who we think what we are produces the uh, behavior with the words and the actions so when we talk about sadachar it is not just a uh, offering obeisances or folding the palms in kritanjali mudra or something like that so and uh, externally also sadachar should be followed we don't say we shouldn't huh? we should follow but the uh, internal submission is the most important aspect of external sadachar if there is a lack in internal submission there is a problem with the sadachar i would suggest some of the devotees come more come become written here yeah? come some devotees can so at the same time there uh, right behavior for example nimai pandit even though he was a very great pandit still he was going to the bank of the river last time i was selling correct na no? was saying he was actually folding the dhoti and giving it to vaishnavas and uh, you know he was giving that Uh, tilaka to the vaishnavas or kushagras he was laying down for them to do gayatri mantra or old vaishnavas in the water he helped them by giving them giving his hand to lift them out of water uh, so they all were blessing him krishna matirastu they were offering blessings to him so uh, he was uh, rendering service and he had a great reverence for vaishnavas in fact once when shivas thakur stopped nimai pandit on the way and ordered him and said he said nimai you know of your scholarship throw away all this books on nyaya huh? just chant krishna's name as it is said huh? and become krishna's devotee and what was nimai's response he said he just smiled and said yeah, thank you for your good instruction some day i will become a vaishnava huh? i will you know by you a blessings of vaishnavas like you one day i will become a vaishnava he said so in this way uh, whenever he talked about vaishnavas for example one day mukunda was coming and nimai pandit told his uh, boys say si mukunda is coming but after seeing me he is running away the boys he asked the boys why is he running away the boys said his students said maybe he must have forgotten something at home or something nimai said no no these vaishnavas never like to uh, you know to prajalpa 
isn't it? That poor is running around. He shouted, Hey Mukunda, they will come and I will become such a Vaishnava. Even Brahma and Shiva will want to come and associate with me. Like that he said. Uh, so, you will find that Nimai Pandit's behavior towards Vaishnava is one of respect. Even when he was a Nyaya teacher, he had adoration, admiration. Uh, later on also, when he went to Gadadhar Pandit, he said, hey, Gadadhar, right from your early age, you were a pure devotee of Krishna, you are always uh, remembering Krishna and chanting Krishna's names and talking about Krishna. Mm. Look at me, I have been a mere scholar. Huh? You know, like that he was actually criticizing himself huh? and he was uh, glorifying Gadadhar, like that. So, therefore, when he fully manifested his personality as, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, mm. that time you see he, his dealings with Vaishnavas, uh, like a gold standard, huh? that time. So, inner at our inner attitudes manifest externally as behavior. Huh? So, the inner attitudes matter also a lot. And our externals affect the internals, internals affect the externals. For example, prayers and pilgrimages, huh? you know, etiquettes and manners, you know, you know, our uh, speech and actions externally. These also affect our internals also. Huh? That is also important. For example, you wear dhoti, kurta, tilak, matajis wear sari, you know, and tilak, kantimala, and then you come, you get one type of feeling about who you are. Huh? The other hand, you wear, you know, jeans and t-shirt and, you know, goggle, you know, some goggles and you're, uh, you know, wearing a gold chain, the neck and gold strap watch and you're boarding a bike and your Reebok shoes, you're going like that. You feel you are somebody else, huh? correct? No? Because the externals affect your internals. Huh? Similarly, you know, one, one lady was wearing a new sari, a very, very thin, attractive, very gorgeous looking sari she was wearing, but it was like a see-through type of sari. And going on the road, it appeared to her, the whole world is looking at her only. She thought she was feeling very shy. Why is everybody staring at me like this? When she went to her home, she looked in the mirror. Do I look so beautiful that everybody looks at me? Then she understood her bindi instead of here, it was here. Her bindi was not here, it was here. That was the reason why people looked at her. But she was imagining that everybody is looking at me because I am. So, many a time we imagine... So many things about ourselves, based on our externals. Our externals affect our internals. And somebody can look like a monkey and still wear a very gorgeous dress and think that everybody is attracted to me. You know? Correct. Like in Pune station, I was waiting for the train. I saw one fellow, you know, he was he was looking like this. The, in the mirror they have in the phone, no? The mobile also they have a mirror. Looking at them. And he was taking a selfie of himself. You know, he looks like a monkey, but he thinks I look like some Amita or somebody like that. So people imagine, huh? like a cat is looking into the mirror and is thinking he looks like a lion or something like that. Correct? So that means externally one has a very high estimation of oneself, then that affects one's internal consciousness also. Similarly, the internal attitudes affect external behavior. That means they both are connected. So what we have to do in our life, Sadachar, we have to follow... Externally or internally? Both. That is the whole point. <laughs> Make an effort to follow externally also and internally also. Both ways work huh? so that they reinforce each other. Huh? Such behavior. Now I will tell you some erratic behaviors, I will tell you. Uh, the uh, Erratic behaviors which spoil our sadhachara, I will tell you. Hmm? Over the years of our practice, subtly we can become boastful of our activities, of our uh, knowledge, of our achievements and accomplishments. In the outside world, they will ask you to make a SWOT analysis, correct, no? Strength, weakness, opportunity, threats and all that. Even when you are going to give lecture in any place, many times people introduce you, you know. They make you hear who you are. Huh? And then you hear about it, and we repeatedly hear about ourselves. And therefore, what I generally do in all the youth programs, everywhere I tell them, before I reach the hall, you announce about me. 
so that I don't have to hear my about myself only. You finish announcing. Don't uh, waste my time when I come. I tell them. So, because if you repeatedly they superimpose something about you, who you are, then we will start believing that those things are true. Huh? Because generally Vaishnavas praise us uh, often times more than what we are, huh? which is the nature of Vaishnavas. Correct? They may say. Uh, so many big things about us. So, but if we keep hearing and we start believing it, then uh, we may become very proud. Huh? And uh, and that pride which arises inside, that also will spoil our speech and spoil our actions. We will want to impress the people. Huh? We will want to influence the people. We will want to control the people, and so many things will be there. So, therefore, uh, uh, in the same manner, for example. See every sampradaya, um, you will see also, uh, will always want to say that that sampradaya is very important. For example, you know the Sri Vishnuvas from South India, they have that pride of you know, a thousand years later on also that they have faithfully followed Ramanuja and it is a reality. It's a fact actually. We have to applaud them for that, for the loyalty they have for Sri Pad Ramanucharya, and that is actually a feather on their cap. Even though their rituals, some of them are very, very strict and stringent in the temples they celebrate. Mm. Not all Vaishnavas will even understand them also. Huh? But still, without giving up, they are doing it uh, in their temples. So we have to adore them for that. Mm. Similarly, those who are coming in Madhva Sampradaya, you will find they have their Ashtamatha worship going on. Even internationally, people come uh, to take part in the chariot festival there and also go to the Matadipatis and spend time with them. There are they will, they will do archana for so many hours in a day, <laughs> sitting with the deities, right now. So, they have their uh, lineage of uh, coming from Madhvacharya and they have their uh, joy and pride of the Madhva Sampradaya. Uh, similarly, you will find our Gaudiya Sampradaya. Gaudiya Sampradaya, um, you will find, we have had many great acharyas like Vishnu Chakra Thakur, Baladeva Vidya Bhushan. Uh, we have uh, six Goswamis. Uh, their writings and literature are extraordinary, especially Jiva Goswami. Huh? So, now, every Sampradaya has some specialities uh, which they can uh, praise about. But while doing that, one has to be very careful not to criticize the other Sampradayas. Huh? Uh, like sometime Mahaprabhu jokingly would speak to Venkata Bhatta that why Lakshmi wants to take part in the, you know, Rasa dance. But uh, Venkata Bhatta and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are very thick friends. Huh? You know, you can see that uh, Venkata Bhatta had a deep respect for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also. Huh? And this discussion does not bring about any bitterness at all in them. Rather, Venkata Bhatta says that you are the Supreme Person of Godhead, you know everything, so you explain to me. Huh? Like that he says, like that. Huh? And in the same manner, Vallabhacharya, uh, when he dealt with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had such a relation with him. Balabhacharya was amazed by the love that was raging the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was so charmed, he invited Mahaprabhu to his house, he washed his feet, he took water, that water, and then sprinkled on his own head and the heads of all the family members. And he was longing for Mahaprabhu's association. In fact, he told Mahaprabhu, when he went to Prayag, you stay in my home only. But so many Brahmanas came to invite Mahaprabhu. Balabhacharya became a I mean, the assistant of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Balabhadra Bhattacharya, he decided that I have to move back, Mahaprabhu, back, uh, you know, I should not keep him here in Prayag because uh, Mahaprabhu is becoming uh, attracted by the Yamuna. Huh? So let him stay at the bank of Ganga, not in the bank of Yamuna. Huh? One taking. Plus, too many invitations are coming for Prasad. Huh? So, Vallabha, Vallabhacharya also, if you see, he had a very strong relation with Mahaprabhu. Therefore, Mahaprabhu would correct him regarding the commentary he made, which he claimed to be better than Sridhar Swami, is correct. But after correcting, did Vallabhacharya have, you know, uh, turn against Mahaprabhu or go away from him? Rather, he longed to uh, stay with Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu's associates. Huh? And he never wanted to leave them. Huh? In fact, he called them all to his house and fed them prasad and offered obeisances and he won the heart of everybody after that. So, what do we learn from these two episodes, Venkata Bhatta and Vallabhacharya? We can see that when two Sampradaya people come, 
Uh, if their uh, relationships become thicker, hmm, more thicker when they come together, that is a good sign, healthy sign that the sadhachara has been good on uh, on their part. <laughs> Because if sadhachar is bad or spoiled, it will only distance us. And such mistakes have been committed also. Hmm? Like in IIT Bombay, they made one, uh, you know, one temple of Devi. You know, oh, Par- Parvati Devi. Just like we have Kanyakumari, we have. Huh? Like that, there are some temples. Even in Hyderabad also, we have one Kanyakumari temple we have. Huh? Oh, Kanya, she is uh, just like, she is there in the... Uh, this thing, you know, you are that uh, south, extreme south, Kanyakumar, like that. So sometimes they have that kind of Devi, uh, single Devi sitting. They had made a temple and uh, some Iskand devotees had come to IIT for preaching in those days. They thought that these guys are coming every Saturday and our opening is also on Saturday. To be nice, we can call them. But then when they called, it was some, uh, some devotees who are not very mature. Huh? So they looked at the deity in the temple and they said, Oh, this is a Durga worship. We don't worship demigods. We should worship Krishna and things like that. They spoke. And it is the opening of the temple. So one has to be a bit sensitive. One should know what to speak. Actually, when we go to such occasions, Ganesha or uh, Durga Puja and things like that, we should try to present their relationship with Krishna. It is not a very easy thing to present. Unless one is really, really... Well done it properly, one should present it in such a way that you don't hurt the sentiments of those local people. At the same time, you present something which people can take. Like in our uh, one of the NITs, they invited us for Ganesh Chaturthi. So our boys said that we will cook for 800 students and professors. Huh? They cooked prasad. They cooked prasad and offered it to the Radha Krishna picture and also offered a garland to the Lord. And they took it all. And Ganesh ji got a maha garland half, no, offered to Radha Krishna. And the prasad uh, served, served to Krishna was also offered to Ganesh after that. And then it was given to all the people. And then they chanted the whole Brahma Samhita. When the college students chanted Brahma Samhita, all professors were all amazed. Huh? How beautifully these fellows are reciting the whole Brahma Samhita and everything. Isn't it? And they told some pastime relating Ganesha. And uh, you know that pastime of Ganesha and Kartikeya getting a mango. Huh? That kind of three, four pastimes they said. Uh, there are pastimes between Ganesha and Krishna also. There are pastimes. So, in this way, and the whole program went on very well. Everybody was very happy. Huh? But then everybody in that program chanted Hare Krishna Mantra more than half an hour. <laughs> Isn't it? So, and then many of them actually want to become devotees also subsequently. It has to be done very carefully when one goes to other people following other paths. Huh? One should find out how to do it very carefully hmm. when we are. So, uh, sometimes people coming from other sampradayas, they become interested in ISKCON. Huh? So, we have to know the art of uh, allowing them to become nice devotees in ISKCON, become fixed up. Or some of them actually want to remain in Sri Vaishnava. At the same time, come to ISKCON and take advantage of the ambience and the association. But, they want to maintain their connection with their Acharya also. Like even His Holiness Chinaji or Swami Maharaj. Many of his disciples come to his Khan also. They chant 16 rounds also, Hare Krishna. So then uh, what should his Khan devotees do? Actually, you should respect their loyalty to their parampara. Hmm? I always tell them, see the very fact that you are feeling such a strong connection. No, why should you take Diksha in his Khan? Huh? You can remain loyal to them. Huh? And you say that you have already taken initiation, not when you are a small child. After you have become 16 or 18, you know, you have taken Diksha and Sri Vaishnava, for example. That means you are fully grown up. And then you have met an Acharya. He is a Vaishnava Acharya. So you, whatever Acharya has given, you do those things. Along with that, you come to his con and take inspiration, in Bhakti inspiration. And if you want to chant 16 rounds, you can chant. Because Sri Vaishnava, a good number of Acharyas, even traditionally also have been worshipping Krishna also. It's not that they worship only Krishna, only Vishnu. There are a lot of examples to show. No? So, I, I, that's what I tell them. And uh, if you artificially force them, no, 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 if you really want to come here, you have to, uh, we will take you to our Iskan Guru, you have to take initiation from Iskan only. That is not proper. No? That's not proper. On the other hand, some people say that, you know, I was given this Shanku Chakra and all these things when I was a small boy. I was only six or eight years. My parents took me and gave me. 
and my connection is not very strong there and, and i didn't learn anything there and those are all very very traditional things so i am not able to connect but iskon is very modern i am able to connect easily you know yeah, the nature of people here gels very well with me and i want to take if you say no 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 you are born in a sri vishnu you cannot come here you don't have to say huh? okay you don't feel that connection there and you are not initiated fully yeah, that that uh, childhood initiation is a tender thing you have, we didn't have much knowledge also at that time you want to come to iskon and connect and we don't mind because you want to come you feel the connection you feel shelter here we are here to facilitate you uh, and serve you but if you feel connection very strongly there and you want to take diksha there and we will facilitate you to do that also we are simply facilitators we want to we want to see you get a very stable spiritual shelter which will go all your life and beyond also correct no so therefore sadachar is a very delicate thing we have to know proper behavior Mm-hmm. in the same manner some of us may be coming from families huh? say i come from a shaivite background you know my me and gaurang prabhu and all we come from smartha background you know worshiping shiva for many years and i have gone to a dozen organizations before huh? and i have heard so many stories examples from different organizations we have to be very careful when we are presenting the philosophy in krishna consciousness you have to It. you will have to throw it out of the window mm-hmm. and we have to actually present what we have learned from prabhupad and prabhupad's mood and mission prabhupad uh, what faith and conviction is giving us and we have to stick to that and one cannot uh, afford to uh, keep your mind lingering in the old connections mm-hmm. so sometimes what happens people come to this con so externally they come to this con but internally they maintain their heart somewhere else and therefore even on sitting on vyasas they, they criticize iskan also huh? they criticize iskan they criticize prabhupad's purports huh? they criticize huh? they may not criticize prabhupad's purports directly huh? but they will subtly criticize huh? so they will say that you know this prabhupad's purport is very simple therefore let us go to acharyas like chakravarti thakur or bhavarta deepika by shridhar swami you know or it has go to brahat toshni by sanatan go swami lagu toshni by jiva go swami hai akrama sundar by jiva go swami let's go to that because here we are not getting much from prabhupad purport let's go there when you say like that some new comers will be disturbed you will say what he is saying there is not much in prabhupad purport he is saying and because that is not the way you are supposed to speak you should say that prabhupad himself is recommending us to go to the go swamis and go to the previous acharyas commentaries now why is that prabhupad not presenting everything that acharyas have presented huh? if prabhupad presented everything in his purports the bhagavatam will become 10 times the size what you see now huh? already people are saying oh bhagavatam is 18 volumes huh? imagine if all the commentaries of all acharyas prabhupad translated into english and put them inside then this, you will have bhagavatam which is four times at five times the size now huh? and who is going to read it that's one thing another thing all the acharyas what they have given is not necessary at this current time place circumstance also there are many examples analogies they give which is more relevant to that contemporary time also many a times so prabhupad knew the art of exact like a saragrahi like a honey collecting bumblebee goes and exactly connects he would keep all the commentaries and pull out what is necessary and that that's in sanskrit but he will give it in english for us made it very easy for us and our proper style is what you learn little little of everything now when you grow up then you can go to those purports and learn more deeply for example you know jay vijay are standing at the vaikuntha gate and the brahmanas are coming so proper uh, sticks to the point that brahmana should be respected you know and jay vijay uh, you know you know they dealt with them like this and we should deal with brahmanas like this even lord respects the brahmanas and all and then prabhu says you can also go to chakravarti thakur's commentary to learn more about what he said here and there when you go there it is mentioned that lord actually was angry with kumaras if you read that section because they cursed his servants jay vijay and lord actually is mystically speaking to them Uh, which is bewildering to them and they realize their folly huh? and uh, and at the same time the lord uh, is glorifying vaishnavas especially jay vijay's attitude of 
immediately accepting the mistake and falling at the feet and that is vaishnavata huh? so this is not something that prabhupad wants you to learn in the early stage huh? first you learn basic things and then he says now you go to acharya's commentary and you can learn more deeply about those things so prabhupad only is directing us to acharya's so whenever we are reading acharya commentary i always remember that prabhupad has told me to read this therefore you are reading for us who is the <coughs> connection Prabhupada is the connection. Not that, you know, Prabhupada is elementary and Acharyas are advanced and I have direct connection to Acharyas. Then you are overriding Prabhupada. So by overriding Prabhupada, you are offending Prabhupada. Correct, no? So by uh, maintaining an offensive mentality to Prabhupada, that, that's very dangerous for us. Huh? Actually, one uh, boy was keeping long flowing hair, you know. So Prabhupada called him and said, why are you keeping long flowing hair like this? You are a Vaishnava, you should shave huh? and keep Shika nicely. So, so he said, Prabhupada, I saw Lord Chaitanya as Nimaya Pandit. He also had long flowing hair. <laughs> you know, Jesus had long flowing hair. Therefore, I am also following them. I am following great souls. <laughs> and then Prabhupada asked him, How did you know Lord Chaitanya? Tell me. <laughs> Who told you about Chaitanya? <laughs> he said, Prabhupada, I learned from you only. And see my style, Prabhupada said. <laughs> mm-hmm. I am shaved. <laughs> so you should follow me. I only told you about Chaitanya. And you are quoting Chaitanya to me. Yeah. So then you have to shave and keep Shika. Chaitanya is Lord. We are not Lord. Lord can keep. He is actually known for his long flowing curly locks of blackish hair. As devotees, sometimes if you want to have curly hair and show off to women, look at my hair, how beautiful curly hair I have. That is nonsense. <laughs> you should keep short hair and Shika like a Prabhupada. Another devotee, Prabhupada, he was having a mustache, big mustache. And Prabhupada caught him and said, Hey, why are you having mustache? You should clean shave, he said. So he said, Prabhupada, I saw even you have a mustache. I saw in one photo when you were a businessman. I am doing business, I thought I can also keep. <laughs> Prabhupada said, That was before my initiation, not after my initiation. After initiation, I shaved it. So now you, I have initiated you, so you have to shave up now. See, Prabhupada gave a logical argument to him. <laughs> then he shaved up after that. So the point is what? When Prabhupada started this movement, some hippies were so straightforward and direct and bold. Yeah? They treated Prabhupada like a friend also. Later on, they understood how great personality he is. You heard from Mukunda Maharaj, you know, when he was driving a car, you know, Prabhupada had uh, bitten and given one apple. He also bit, uh, bit it and gave it back to Prabhupada. You know that, no? <laughs> so, so, they were very innocent. Huh? But uh, we are born in India, we can't afford to be so innocent or ignorant. So, unless we have a very great reverence for Prabhupada, you know, we are in the wrong moment, if we don't have that type of reverence. Because then what happens, you, many of you here, devotees, you, you know, you are expert in Sanskrit, you know, you know Acharya's commentary, you work on the Bhagavatam also. So that is one of the reasons I am talking about these things. I may not speak this everywhere. Huh? But here I am speaking because when you come across multiple commentaries yes. and when you also know Sanskrit, sometimes uh, with that uh, spectacles, when you look at Prabhupada's books, small books, medium books and Bhagavatam commentaries and all, you may tend to think that, you know, oh, this is pretty elementary. Huh? Actually, you may say it is elementary, but could you reach nook and corner of the world to living entities who are most degraded and bring them to the standard of devotional services of to Lord Vasudeva? Could you bring it? You couldn't do that, so you have shut up your mouth. <laughs> That's what I would say. Why? You may be a big Sanskrit scholar, but do you have the guts to go to nook and corner of the world where Prabhupada went to one place where, you know, uh, uh, the devotees took him to one place. I don't remember the name, Fugs, I think. These people, uh, they were uh, thugs, thugs. They were uh, having nude body completely and no dress in their bodies. And Prabhupada got down from the car, they took him. All of them were uh, sitting, men, women with practically no dress. And Prabhupada gave a, wanted to give a lecture there. And Prabhupada asked, What do you guys do? So he asked, hmm? And Prabhupada asked, uh, what do you and then they were saying we are uh, producing potatoes they said you know, no Prabhupada asked uh, you know, no Prabhupada asked a question what is the goal of your life they said to produce potatoes they were saying Prabhupada said I am not asking about that one that's your profession 
But what is the goal of your life? So Prabhupada spoke, he went to them. Uh, he went to them. And then one of them became big devotee from that crowd. So he was later on speaking in one Prabhupada appearance day. Uh, you can imagine how Prabhupada actually was delivering one fellow when he was taking Diksha from Prabhupada. Pra- Prabhupada said he has been slaughtering animals for 10 years. Uh, so Prabhupada said, your hands are tainted with blood. But I am giving you Diksha now. Kill no more, he said. Huh? So this is the kind of... That means, you know, Prabhupada is exactly following in the mood of Lord Nityananda. Huh? And delivering people who are most fallen. You can see that. And we may be learned in Sanskrit. We may be very vastly learned in Acharya's commentary. And you are not the only one. There are many people like that. Nowadays, if you see... Uh, you must have seen in the YouTube also, there are many, many people nowadays giving Ramayana, correct, no? Ramayana, Mahabharata, and uh, there are people who are learned in all the four Vedas also. Huh? There are people who can recite the Taitri Upanishad without seeing the book at all. Huh? I saw with my own eyes. There was one fellow in my father's uh, cremation time. Uh, one of the days, one of the fellow was invited. He just sits uh, close to the wall and keeping his hands like this closed, uh, Brahman, huh? continuously recited the whole Taitri Upanishad. Huh? He doesn't see at all. Huh? What about them? They may be very qualified, but they cannot do what Prabhupada did. That is the point. Therefore, I take shelter of Prabhupada. Huh? So, therefore, one should not have the artificial pride that comes from these kind of achievements. Huh? Because these achievements of uh, knowledge of Sanskrit, knowledge of Acharya's commentaries, Many a times we can be deeply learned and we can keep it with ourselves only. We have no power to reach it to a large number of people as Prabhupada could reach. Prabhupada's miracle is what? He was very deeply learned himself, but he only presented what people can grasp. Correct, no? And in a way by which he could bring them to the standard of becoming a devotee. Correct, no? He did in all kinds of people. Prabhupada's purports are suitable for such degraded people also. At the same time, even Indians who are supposed to be more cultured and more learned, even they are able to, you know, plow deeper in Prabhupada's uh, purports now. You know, many purports are many interesting things that Prabhupada speaks to for us to discuss and churn it also. And he instituted a recitation of Bhagavatam every day in all his temples. <laughs> one, one verse every day morning, you know. And also installed uh, Radha Krishna deities, even in the Western world, <laughs> where people... You know, those people are uh, give us our daily bread. They didn't even know anything about God. Uh, you know, he made them worship Radha Krishna deities and Gaurnitha deities in the West. Mm-hmm. So one should uh, not forget the kind of uh, uh, extraordinary superhuman work that Prabhupada has done. Uh, and one should not take his purpose very cheaply. So sometimes I see some people directly put only the Vishnu Chakra Thakur's uh, translation. Huh? There was one devotee, I don't want to mention the name, who is to teach uh, Bhagavata. He would put Chakravati Thakur's translation only. So I asked, why you are not putting Prabhupada's translation? The Prabhupada's translation is very gentle, very complex. Huh? was telling, so we use. And it is not wrong to use Chakravati Thakur's translation. It's very simple. It is. As well as Bhanu Maharaj translates it in a very simple manner. Just mm-hmm. word to word, easily he translates it, translates it. We can refer it. Nothing wrong. It's our Acharya only. We are not going to anybody else. At the same time, I would always suggest that it is important for us to see what Prabhupada says also. One example I'll tell you. It is there uh, in, I think it's 1528. I'll show you one. It's a Jadabharata section. There is one. Sorry, fifth canto. No. This chapter, I think, okay.
here it's going to come now, that verse is coming. He's saying, you know, the Aho Kashtam, Prashtoham, Atma Vatam, Anupatat and all those things he's saying, okay. Here one question you will ask our, uh, you know, one, uh, <clears throat> how did uh, Bharata became this uh, deer? At that time, you know, the question comes here, you will ask, uh, unless he did, uh, you know, unless his Prarabdha Karma pushed him to get that body, like that there is one. This thing will come here. Here, here it will come now. Huh? Next one. The next one. This one. This one. Here. The world, the deer, the metal body, aquatic body. Yeah. Although he lost his human and received body of deer, he did not forget the instance. Actually, he will ask a question. Twenty fifth. Huh? I read that, my dear king, in this way, Bhatma Maharaj fell down. And then, if it were not due to his past feet, this is what I was telling you, 526. Here you see, he says here, how could he have been attracted to the deer after giving our session? He says, correct, no? You see this, note this point. Huh? He says this. Uh, otherwise, how he could show such uncontrollable affection for a deer? Correct, no? This was definitely, see, our purpose is, this was definitely due to his past karma. That means some past karma attachment was there for that jiva that pushed him to you know, become attracted to the deer and therefore he was engrossed. Then he says the king was so engrossed in petting and maintaining the deer, he fell down from his spiritual life. Okay. Now you see the purport what Prabhupada says here. You know, <clears throat> he says, in this regard, question may be raised. How can a devotee be affected by his past misconduct and vicious activities? In Brahma Samhita Karmani Nirdhati it says, and then what Prabhupada is saying here, you see. Here what Prabhupada says. Read this one. Bharat Maharaj could not be punished for his past misdeeds. The conclusion must be that Maharaj Bharat purposefully became over addicted to the deer and neglected his spiritual advancement. To immediately rectify his mistake, for a short time he was awarded the body of a deer. So here Prabhupada says, different from what you saw in the... There he says, it is... And Prabhupada only translates it. What he says? It was definitely due to his in a past life karma that pushed him to get the body of a deer. Here he says, therefore, Prabhupada's purport have to be deeply understood. Now I'll tell you the explanation what it is. See, now it goes on like this. Huh? And then uh, here Prabhupada says here, one more thing he says here. See here. It is with this conviction that we declare in our Back to God Maxim that devotees, like the Goswami is living in Vrindavan, who purposefully commit some sinful activity, are born in the bodies of dogs, monkeys and tortoises in their holy land. Then thus they take on these lower forms for a short while. And after that they give up those animal bodies, they are again promoted to the spiritual world. Such punishment is only for a short period. And it is not due to their past karma. It may appear to be due to their past karma. But it is offered to rectify the devotee and bring him to pure ocean service. There are two very, very important points here. One point is, for example, our prarabdha karmas impel us, but they cannot compel you. <laughs> That's the difference between impelling and compelling. Say, somebody in the marketplace is showing some commodity to you, some glittering commodity. You know? And you are also becoming attracted. Sometime in the train, correct, no? Some the item they are selling. They are attracted. So you feel like taking out the money and buying it. So you are impelled or you are, you know, tempted by that. But can that fellow put his hand in your pocket and take out your money? Can he do that? That he cannot do. This is what your Prarabdha Karma cannot do. He can only tempt you. And if you succumb to that temptation, then you are likely to fall. Huh? 
If you don't succumb to that temptation, then you will not fall. Otherwise, what's the use of Shastra then? If, if you, any past Prabhupada Karma can knock you down, then Shastras are useless. Because Shastras are there, because you can study Shastra and develop Viveka, Viveka Buddhi and make your free will uh, in line with the Supreme Lord and then you can conquer your Prabhupada Karmas. It should be possible. Therefore, the Prabhupada Karma can only impel you but cannot impel you. That's one answer. Another answer is that when Prabhupada is saying this, he's, he talk, uses the word willful neglect. Huh? Willful neglect means jan bojgar, neglect karna. Huh? So that means our endeavor and God's grace. You all know this example of that two inches too short. Right now. So his Prabhupada's complaint about Bharat Maharaj is that he has fallen short in his endeavor. So don't complain the anarthas. Complain about your lack of effort from the sadhaka side. Uh, many times whenever some damage happens to us in our spiritual life, generally what we is a conditioning, you know, people play a victim game. I saw a victim, you know, because, you know, my friend spoiled me or my home ambience spoiled me, my teacher spoiled me, my old friendship spoiled me or my colleague in the office spoiled me. They always smoothly pass the buck to other people without taking responsibility oneself. Mm -hmm. But here Prabhupada wants to say that if you didn't make the effort and you are blaming others, it is simply useless. Mm -hmm. So you have to make the effort. And if you did make an effort, then Lord would have reciprocated with your effort. Correct, no? Which means our effort and like you sow the seed, then God will give the rain. Huh? If you don't sow the seed, then how do you expect the crop to grow? Huh? So, he's blamed. That means both are saying the right thing. Shukadeva Gosam is saying from this side and Prabhupada is saying from this side. Prabhupada is talking from endeavor side and Shukadeva Gosam is talking from which side? Praradha side. So, both Acharyas are talking about the same issue in hand. One is talking from this angle, one is talking from that angle. This is the kind of thing we should discuss. When we are, ta when you are teaching Bhagavatam, you should go to the purports of Bhagavatam and churn the purports threadbare. Huh? Analyze. Prabhupada said, study my purports from different angles, scrutinizingly, he said. This is so one point. You are, all of you are clear about this point? Okay, there is one more point hidden in this. The punishment of the Lord towards the devotees is not the same as the punishment of Maya towards the conditioned souls. Maya punishing conditioned soul is like a police, you know, uh, opening his belt and then whipping a thief with his belt, <laughs> like that. Huh? Whereas Krishna punishing the devotee is like a mother pinching a child or slapping a child. Huh? Mother slapping a child actually is for the good of the child, correct, no? So, uh, like for example, the Bhar Bharat was given the body of a deer. He was looking like a deer externally, but he was more spiritually advanced than Bharata. Huh? Because as a deer, he ate only dry grass, he didn't eat wet grass. He didn't live in his uh, birthplace, which is Kalanjara Parvat. He went to the Palahashrama. Huh? And he was not uh, gratifying his senses, roaming around with other deers. Rather, he stayed in Palahashrama and heard the sermons by the saintly persons. Huh? Isn't it? And also, his state of consciousness was one of repentance. Huh? Constantly weeping and remembering the Lord that I have wasted my human form of life. Huh? So, which goes to show that Lord externally gave him the body of a deer, but then he, this deer repented. Huh? So, sometimes you find such amazing things here. I'll show you one shorter. See here, you can see this. Oh my God, just Sunny Dev Maharaj. 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 Oh my God, just Sunny भोलेनाथ से शुरुआत किया Thank <laughs> you.
It is not around for food or anything. You will see that it is very, very steadily is doing. तीन दिन से कर रही है। लो बेन लो लो। ओ बेन फोन लो मारो तू। So they give food. Again, you will take that and again you will keep doing it. Hey, my mom is going to get out of here. You go? Oh, there is a lot of money. If they thought it is gone again, he will do it. He will come back. Who is gone? 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 Again, he'll come back, see? No, he'll come back. 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 You can see enthusiasm, eh? He'll come back. 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 And it's not just... You know, he's not just doing once or twice, he's doing for a long time. So, this type of uh, animals, uh, um, this is another very short one, this one. Amazing, no? <laughs> Actually, they were, this was a deer which was wounded. So they brought it and they cured it and sent it back into the forest. But uh, again it came back. Yeah. So Bharat was somewhat like this type of deer only. Huh? So he didn't, I mean, uh, what do you call it? He didn't uh, lose his devotion service. Hmm? So that's another point Prabhupada was making. If a devotee falls down and then Krishna gives us somewhat like a punishment. In that punishment, he may get a lower body, but his bhakti is visible, even in that body also. Bhakti is not forgotten. That is saying, yeah. Hmm? So, now these are the two main points Prabhupada is highlighting in his purport. So, these kind of points we have to extract and discuss. Why am I showing this to you? Hmm. Prabhupada's purports can be superficially read uh, and it can be uh, scrutinizingly read. Huh? His Holiness Gaur Govind Maharaj says that uh, in the fish, uh, sorry, in the ocean, if you superficially uh, surf in the ocean, you will get only fishes, he says. Huh? But when you go deep, you get Ratna. Therefore, it's called Ratna Garba, we call it. Hmm? Similarly, Prabhupada's purpose also. Superficially you read or you skip it, then you won't get much. And your idea or notion about Prabhupada will be very superficial. Hmm? Because you read superficially, you also think about him. Think of him to be superficial. So who is superficial? We are superficial. Huh? Not Prabhupada. If you, this is one place, like this I can show you hundreds of places in Prabhupada purports. Um, when I teach Bhagavatam also, in the Bhaktivedanta Raja Vidyalai, you know, I go to the purports like this and then I have highlighted. Huh? And then I, I display it on the screen and this is the way I teach many times, taking the purports. Actually, in, the, in many times people uh, go to the overview. 
And nowadays we have the Subodhini guide, correct now? So people go to the overview, cut, 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 cut. The, okay, these are the three sections and the, these are the translations you have read, you know. And then uh, people memorize the shlokas. Huh? In India, memorizing shlokas is a very famous pastime of Jaya people. Huh? You know, children can recite, uh, you know, whole Bhagavad Gita in 50 minutes or, you know, they can recite all 700 shlokas, you know. Uh, then they have to be transported to shloka loka only. Huh? Isn't it? And they can't go to Goloka, isn't it? Uh, so, uh, that, that is not as important as, you know, going into the purports and uh, sitting peacefully and then discussing and churning and asking questions. And there are many, many things. The, like, for example, you all have heard the word Dharmasya Glani, right? Now, where does it come? Yada Yadahi Dharmasya Glani Bhavati Bharata. Abhyuttanam dharmasya tadatmanam sajam. So generally when you hear the word dharmasya glani, people will say that, ha ha, correct, dharmasya glani ho gaya, because what age has come now? Kali Yuga. Dharmasya glani is happening. That's what we talk. But Prabhupada doesn't say that. Prabhupada says dharmasya glani means, you know, that we are not taking Krishna consciousness seriously. Uh, our lethargy to take to Krishna consciousness, that is our dharmasya glani, he says. So he makes us responsible, not the... Atmosphere of Kali Yuga. Because which is, if actually blaming Kali Yuga and going with one's nonsense is the easiest thing any jiva can do in Kali Yuga. <laughs> Correct, no? Huh? Because that makes, that puts you on a very uh, platform of ease. Huh? And then you can say, Kya kare dunya bigad gaya, hum bhi bigad gaya. Huh? No, purpose says, Dharma says, means you are not taking Krishna, Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Therefore, you have to read the purports. Huh? In the purport, only Prabhupada tells these things. Huh? Similarly, here another one I'll show you. Like uh, in the Kunti Manani section, Prabhupada says, uh, what is the meaning of renunciation? Like when, for example, when some new people see me, educated people and all, they say, oh, after IIT you left everything? You become a monk? Kya ho gaya? Any tragedy ho jivan mein? Huh? And people ask, you know, you had any broken love, some girl ran away or something? Huh? I said, no. And then one man asked me, Aapka degree ho gaya na pura? <laughs> he was asking. He thought I left the degree. Degree was too hard <laughs> to finish or something. I said, I finished my degree, worked for also four years, I said. Okay, okay, then what is the reason? So, they think actually if you are renouncing everything, maybe, you know, you became unhappy with the world and you left everything. Maybe something happened in your life. People think like that. But what Prabhupada says here, you will see, I'll show you. To cut off the tie of material affection means to broaden the field of spiritual activities. Huh? Here Prabhupada will say that. Uh, you can read this. See, see here. What Prabhupada is saying here. Of the, uh, to cut off all family affection means to broaden the field of activities. Without doing this, no one can be qualified as a brahmana, a king, a public leader or a devotee of the Lord. The personality of God as an ideal king showed this exa showed this by example. Sri Ramachandra cut off the tie of affection for his beloved wife to manifest the qualities of an ideal king. Ah, you can see that. And then he is talking about the Goswamis before that. If you see here, huh? here he says the typical example. The typical example is a band of six Goswamis who followed the path of Lord Chaitanya. All of them belong to the most enlightened and cultured rich families of the higher caste. But for the benefit of the mass of population, they left their comfortable homes and became mendicants. Uh, who becomes mendicants? Not any Tom, Dick and Harry. Huh? These people belong to the most enlightened and cultured rich families of higher caste, he is saying. They were Brahmanas actually. And then he is saying, but they still left everything for what? For the benefit of mass of population. They left. Uh, and then he's saying to cut off the family affection doesn't mean, okay, uh, people generally think, Itune pauncho ye baba hai, ho gufa mein ek sirf kaupin paan kar baita hai. Kaupin avanta, kalubhagya avanta, vedanta, you know, vedanta, sareshu, sadara manta. So, he just studies vedanta and wearing a kaupin, sits in the gufa, such a pauncho ye baba, kuch bolte hi nahi hai. You just go and offer him, he will only smile and give you ashirvad. People say like that. But Prabhupada smashed all such a false understanding of renunciation. Huh? Prabhupada said, renunciation doesn't mean you are sitting in a gufa. Uh, if you are sitting in a gufa, you are a swarthi. Huh? Like Prahlad says, uh, what is that verse? 
ప్రాయేణ దేవమునయ స్వభి ముక్తి కామాన్ మౌనం చరంతి విజనే నపరార్థ నిష్ట ఇన్ దోస్ టూ లైన్స్ ప్రహ్లాద్ ఇస్ సేయింగ్ దట్ స్వభి ముక్తి కామాన్ మీన్స్ వాట్ దే వాంట్ గెట్ దర్ ఓన్ మోక్ష మౌనం చరంతి దే డోంట్ స్పీక్ విజనే ఇన్ ద ఫారెస్ట్ నా పరార్థ నిష్ట దే హ్యావ్ నో డిజైర్ టు హెల్ప్ ద అదర్ లివింగ్ ఎన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అయితా వివాహ కృపణ విమోక్ష ఏకో నాణ్యం తుదస్య శరణం భ్రమతో ను పశ్య ప్రహ్లాద్ సేజ్ దిస్ అండ్ ప్రభుత్వ ఎలాబరేట్ సెట్ ఇన్ ద పర్పోర్ట్స్ దాట్ రియల్ రెనన్సియేట్ ఇస్ వన్ హూ ఎక్స్పాండ్స్ స్పిరిచువల్ యాక్టివిటీస్ హౌ బై ట్రావెలింగ్ అరౌండ్ ద వరల్డ్ గివింగ్ కృష్ణ కాన్షియస్నెస్ గోయింగ్ అవర్ మూమెంట్ ఈ కాల్ డోర్ టు డోర్ మూమెంట్ వి షుడ్ గో డోర్ టు డోర్ హూ డిడ్ ద డోర్ టు డోర్ నిత్యానంద రేడు అండ్ హూ టోల్ హిమ్ టు డూ దాట్ ప్రతి గరే గరే గియా కోరో ఈ భిక్ష బోలో కృష్ణ భజో కృష్ణ కరో కృష్ణ శిక్ష యూ షుడ్ గో డోర్ టు డోర్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూట్ ప్రపస్ బుక్స్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూట్ ద మాలాస్ మేక్ దమ్ చాండ్ ద హోలీ నేమ్ అండ్ దిస్ ఇస్ రియల్ రెనన్సియేషన్ వెదర్ యు ఆర్ అ గృహస్థ యు ఆర్ అ బ్రహ్మచారి యు ఆర్ ప్రపస్ ఇస్ సాధు డజన్ మీన్ యూ హెస్ టు హ్యావ్ సాఫ్రాన్ నెసర్లీ సాధు ఇస్ వన్ హూ ఓన్లీ వర్క్స్ ఫర్ కృష్ణ డే అండ్ నైట్ వన్ ఇస్ థింకింగ్ అబౌట్ హౌ టు ప్రమోట్ కృష్ణస్ మిషన్ కృష్ణస్ మూమెంట్ ఈస్ అ సాధు ఇట్ కెన్ బి అ చైల్డ్ లైక్ ప్రహ్లాద్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి అ ఉమెన్ లైక్ జానవి దేవి nithyanand das consort huh? or it can be a uh, man anybody you can be so therefore uh, giving a metal attachment doesn't mean you give up all attachment and sleep um, that is not the goal of life we give up material affection so that we can increase our spiritual affection like 7.1 bhagavad gita says mai asakta manaha partha yogam yunjanya dashraya like that he says so these are all in the purport huh? so if we don't uh, read the purport then you don't come to understand uh, who prabhupada is so i will suggest to you all one uh, one very humble suggestion i will uh, give one soft copy to prabhu ji this is the book called propad appreciation this has got about 15 uh, totally how many 17 articles it's a very good book uh, i will uh, leave this book with prabhu ji you can soft copy of the book prabhu ji will forward it all of you so i really love this book because when you read this book you understand who prabhupada is huh? you can get understanding about prabhupada's personality mm, how deep ocean like personality he is huh? you'll understand and he is our founder acharya when you develop a very deep faith in him mm, then you also develop faith in his books his purports his letters his conversations his mission and then our life would become very aligned huh? properly otherwise what happens there are people like in pune one fellow came and spoke some 18 questions uh, you know that uh, that were uh, asked by one of the sri vaishnavas huh? and then he elaborated so much you know, he gave two hours lecture and said the time is not enough i'll give one more lecture then one more two hours huh? and all the people said uh, we all felt we have uh, become sri vaishnavas now after hearing that actually talking about sri vaishnava um substance material is not bad idea even his own radhanath maharaj took to south india yatra and gave a lot of ramar japa stay ananta acharya and all that he gave but one should know the art of presenting some nice things from sri vaishnava and then bringing a connection to lord chaitanya mahaprabhu prabhu pad and to, to our personal life one should know the art of bringing like that because we should talk about how we can apply it in our contemporary current times rather than some people don't know that they start with sri vishnu end with sri vishnu and it appears there is no connection between our current practice and that unless then you have to give up this and go there that's all it looks like that you understand what i am saying so therefore proper sadachar includes all these things also mm-hmm. yeah and we should not uh, subtly criticize for that matter any vaishnava acharya huh? because uh, such uh, such kind of criticisms will uh, will make people lose their trust in our presentation uh, so all of you many of many of you here you know sanskrit you are learned in uh, tika bhagavatam therefore i spoke on these things very elaborately uh, uh, see here 
when you talk about preaching training, learning genuine bhakti in a systematic way, application of Krishna conscious principles in daily life, developing faith and conviction, uh, and service to Lord, developing proper attitudes, mm, developing relationship with devotees, compassion to people at large, we're distributing books on Harinam and Prasad, uh, and becoming good preachers, and becoming exemplary leaders. This is the goal of training. Anybody is giving any training anywhere. Uh, this um, uh, goal should be met. Mm. So, bhakti should be learned systematically, not just to overriding. Mm. Yeah. So, one another important thing. Mm. So, in Sadachar, uh, there is Sadachar towards our superiors, there is Sadachar towards equals, and Sadachar towards juniors. Huh? Here you can see Dhruva Maharaj, um, as soon as Lord touched the conch to his head and empowered him to recite the shlokas, he didn't start reciting shlokas gada 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 immediately. The very first shloka, he expressed his gratitude to Lord. Correct, no? Yonta pravishya mam vacham imam prasuptam sanji vayatta kila shakti darasvadhamna anyascha hasta charana shravana tvagadin pranan namo bhagavate purushaya tubhyam So he's telling that, my dear Lord, your transcendental touch has spiritually kindled my, awakened my senses, especially my legs and hands and ears and head and ultimately my tongue. Uh, because of which I could recite this, I am able to recite these verses. I am grateful to you. In this way you will see, Dhruva is expressing gratitude to Lord Vishnu and Prahlad is expressing gratitude to um, his spiritual master, Narada. Uh, he is telling that it, uh, Narada actually, uh, you know, Narada is the one, I was born in Asuri family. But if I am seeing your darshan now, that is made possible only because of my spiritual master. So, therefore, in our spiritual path, our inner internal state of mind or consciousness should be like this. Read the first one. Deep sense of shelter and gratitude to Guru, Srila Prabhupada and Guru Parampara. Huh? I alone? I alone cannot preach Krishna consciousness. But connecting to my Guru, who brought out of illusion and helped me to chant holy name to purify my heart of all anathas and gave me my original identity in connection to Krishna. At the time of initiation, the Jiva is accepted by Srimati Radharani through the Guru Parampara, our spiritual master. She accepts our body as completely spiritual, ascending service and descending mercy. The Divya Gyan is not just information but revealed in the heart. The sweetness that we experience in servitude to Krishna is by mercy of Guru. Uh, see, this sweetness is what we call as Paramdrishtva, hmm? higher taste. If you don't get that higher taste, you can't go on with spiritual life, lifelong. Uh, and it is not just some information. If any of us here, we are learning Shastra as information, for, it's informative. So you are learning, very soon you will get tired. Very soon I can guarantee you. But if the Shastric information is actually awakening some sweetness or taste in, uh, in the relation to your Guru, relation to Vaishnavas, relation to Krishna, you know, then that sweetness is what that carries you forward in spiritual life. Uh, and that uh, sweetness what we experience is actually mercy. Hmm. And sometimes we become scholarly, but we don't render practical service. And due to which the knowledge remains undigested. Uh, so the uh, uh, knowledge to be digested, it has to be digested through seva. Uh. So that's why the uh, disciple uh, accept service, uh, ascending service and descending mercy. That means you get the knowledge. For example, Brahmaji is receiving knowledge from Lord Vishnu, sitting in the lotus, correct? No? But after that, he is given a seva. Correct? What is the service? Secondary creation. Correct? Now, Visarga. Now, he did that. Similarly, you find, uh, you know, Jiva Goswami is joining the ashram of uh, Rup Sanatan in Vindavan. Initially, he was told that, you know, you can uh, bring the leaves 
and prepare the leaves for writing. Huh? So he would clean the place, he would cook and things like that, very simple services he was rendering. Although he was a scholar returned, I mean, scholar who has come from Varanasi now, <laughs> isn't it? He did very, very menial services hmm, for Jiva Goswami he was doing. And then uh, twice he was sent out also. Once he was in a crocodile hole, correct now? Once he was sent out of Vindavan in dealing with Vallabhacharya once and once with Rupa Narayan for that. That means his attitudes were set right first before he can do any great literary work. Hmm. Now we are doing a lot of literary work. Have we set right our attitude? This is a very, very important question. Yeah. Because Jiva Goswami was deeply learned. He wrote, uh, like I heard, he wrote about four lakh verses. Huh? He so deeply learned. But before he could manifest that Leela of writing, you know, his attitudes were set right by uh, Rupa Goswami. And although it is not that he lacked any attitude, no? he did it actually for, uh, you know, for protecting the good reputation of Rupa Sanatan. Huh? But still, Rupa Sanatan, Rupa Goswami gave him a, a kind of punishment for a while. And then later on, he gifted him Radha Damodar deity, personally carved with his own hands. And then Jiva Goswami manifested his uh, scholarly pastimes after that. Huh? So, the point is, uh, the information we learn will remain information. Prabhupada writes in one purport in the Bhagavad Gita, bookish knowledge without realization is useless. In Bhagavad Gita, he writes. Huh? So, the bookish knowledge for it to become realization and that is made possible through seva. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Huh? yeah. I suppose you give the mic. Good. Um, as you are discussing about the mercy of the Guru, actually, what we are getting the, in the form of mercy of the Guru? Yeah. Because most of the time we see that. Uh, Outside of the ISKCON also, those who are not at all connected to any parampara, nothing. They also very learned, they also doing a lot of them. They are very good qualities also, Vaishnava qualities also. So, yeah. But there is a difference. Understand? For example, there are many girls who are good, but they are not married. They don't have a husband. And there are women who are married, but they have become widow also, some of them. They may not have the husband, correct now. But if there is a woman with a husband, that is very special because she is getting protection. Yeah. Yeah, a widow can become an object of stars by many men if she is not protected. Correct? No? And a girl may be having many good qualities, wonderful qualities, but she will be considered more stable only when she has got situated in a family life properly. Because a boy who is not married, a girl who is not married, both are unstable. Correct? No? A boy should be trained as a brahmachari, girl should be trained in chastity. Yeah. Then when they come together and they marry, then they are respectable. Yeah. In many housing colonies, they don't trust the boys. Yeah. They don't keep the boys only. Correct, no? Because they don't consider them so responsible until they get married. Why? Because the boy is neither in Guru's ashram <laughs> nor married also. So very dangerous. Correct, no? Because they can do any problem. Yeah. So they are not trusted by people. And similarly, a girl, unmarried girl also, if she has come to the puberty age and everything, you know, that is not a very stable position unless she gets married. Uh, then she has a proper husband. Then husband, wife, that's a very stable situation. So, now in the same manner, when you talk about a disciple, somebody may have even bhava for Krishna, they may say even I cry tears also. There are people like that. But their, their bhava is not guided by Guru. Uh, there is no one to correct them. Even many of us thought we are great devotees before coming to Iskand. You know, I go in front of the Lord and some you know, bell rings and then tears are coming in your eyes. And after uh, taking darshan, we'll go to movie, some movie to watch movie also. <laughs> That's our, our bhav is only that much bhav only. <laughs> and the bhav lasts for a few minutes. After that, with friends, you go to a good movie, we'll go. <laughs> I don't know what is good movie, quote unquote good movie. <laughs> we had our own idea what is good movie. <laughs> good movie is a movie where they show some temples ringing of the bells, you know, and then pious families they may show. <laughs> and they also do many nonsense also the movie after that. <laughs> So, what I am saying is, our uh, hodgepodge idea of piety and, uh, you know, religion and all those things became thoroughly exposed and smashed to dust by Srila Prabhupada's purpose. Huh? It's all simply eyewash. If any of you uh, don't agree with me, you have not read Prabhupada's purpose, where Prabhupada smashes these things to dust. You should go and read that, you will see that. Actually, the uh, people, outside people who claim to be who appear like devotees for you, 
I appear like having bhava for you. That is a simply a superficial display of bhakti. You are, we, we, we don't know that depth. There are many people who can coach shlokas, you know, who may look like spiritual people, but if you scratch a little bit, they are die-hard atheistic people. I can show you. Die-hard atheists, even after quoting big, big Upanishadic shlokas and that. Uh, in the same manner, there are people who have bhava for Krishna. If you scratch a little bit, you will see they are having some illicit connection with some woman. You will see that. Uh, they are not under any guru who is controlling them. Actually, being under a guru means willing to be subordinated by guru's instructions. Right now? Orders. So, I don't say they are, uh, they will definitely have problem. What I am saying is, they have to properly come to the classes, hear the classes. Huh? There are boys who openly ask me, Prabhuji, is it alright if you can go on for life without taking initiation? Huh? Why? Because they don't want to be surrendered to anybody. That means they can do whatever they want. Similarly, one boy asked me, Prabhuji, is it necessary to join full-time in the temple? You know, I said, no, you can marry. Said, no, I don't want to marry also. Nowadays, people don't want to marry also because they have to be controlled by wife. <laughs> and they don't want to join temple also because they'll be controlled by temple. Now, they want to be like a street dog having illicit connection with multiple women. And they're preparing their way to, way to hell. That's all. That's what many boys want to do now. And they will not... Uh, they will say, no, 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 I will not do illicit connection at all. They will say, but on and off, some connection will happen. Huh? Here, there, it will happen. They will fall down. They will simply become cheaters. Huh? So, you, you cannot remain because it is not a stable platform. Hmm? It's not a stable platform. There is nothing like a Brahmastha. Huh? There is Brahmachari. Huh? There is a Grihastha. There is nothing like Brahmastha. Yeah? You know, then they will quote the example of Bhishma Pitama. See, Bhishma was like that. Then I asked them, are you Bhishma? Mm -hmm. you know, what was his standard? Bhishma is in the battlefield where heads are flying and he is exchanging love with Lord Krishna. Huh? You know, he was like a lotus in the middle of a muddy pool of water when he was in the Asat Sabha of Kauravas. His consciousness, Mati, Iti Mati Rupa Kalpita with Krishna, it says, it was never affected, even in the middle of the court of you know, Duryodhana. So, who is there in this world now who can say that you know, I can live in the middle of society and my mati will be completely pure and pristine. Huh? Then they can be like Bhishma. Now, now, current day boys cannot keep their minds pure and they don't want to marry also, they don't want to join also and they will be rotting. Huh? So, in this way, not to, situating ourselves in a proper ashram and not accepting a spiritual master and uh, uh, thinking that I already have my devotion on my own. Actually, Shastras are full of contradictions. Why? Because when you read the contradiction, get confused, then only you will run to Guru. Therefore, they give contradiction. Huh? Because, yeah, yeah, then you understand. Why Veda say this? Why it says that? Then you get a Guru now. Huh? Guru only can help you get out of contradictions. Huh? Then only you will understand. Hmm? And they talk about extremes. Huh? So, without that, uh, now somebody may say, okay, I am accepting Diksha from a Guru, but there is no connection, there is no instruction, uh, there is no learning or anything like that. Then Diksha Guru uh, should put you under somebody from where there is some learning that happens. It's not that oh, we are initiated and then, you know, there is no further learning, no further progress, there is no accountability, we are on our own. Like Mrigari, for example, took initiation from Narada. And then Narada went away, not that he was always staying with his disciple. Huh? And then occasionally, once in a blue moon, he visits. And then he told Parvata Parvatamuni, right? Here is one disciple living in this forest. Come, let's go and see what is he doing. And occasionally, he comes to see. Same way, Narada Muni gave knowledge to Prahalad in the womb uh, of Kayadu. Correct, no? After that, do you think he's around the clock sitting with him? Then he traveled, he went away. And then, but what had happened in that uh, receiving of knowledge? Uh, Prahalad felt a very deep connection with Narada. How do you know that? Right now here, that's what you are saying. Soham katam navisruje tava pratya seva is saying. Huh? I, how can I give up my service to my Guru is asking. That means that uh, connection has happened between him and the Guru and then it's going on and on. Because the uh, Guru gives disciple to practice. Uh, yeah, some time for, to practice and then he may come and teach further advanced things he may teach. He may go. So, there are many people manifesting you know, bhava. And nowadays, many people uh, claim that they are devotees of Krishna and everything. But repeatedly I have seen, when I come closer and closer, I see that 
they either they are sahaja ek huh, or they are not following some regulatory principles huh, or their understanding of krishna is very like one example i tell you when i went to south india my sister insisted that there is one tv show which is called bhakti tiruvida you know so every day somebody speaks about uh, different past times and all so one lady was speaking about this bhishma and krishna past time huh, and she was speaking in such a tamil you know it's a very very lakna tamil mm-hmm. and she is speaking very poetically and using many sanskrit words also very nicely and every 5 minutes she gets applause huh? when i heard it my hair was standing on end huh? the way she described the word bishma's feelings for lord krishna and everything i told my it was almost about 15 20 minutes we heard and then they have bhajans and kirtans and bhakti tiruda i told my sister that you know i would like to meet her if possible and appreciate her and we can give her a japa mala make her chant huh? if you can bring her to and then she told me she's a phd huh? she has done her phd in tamil in some tamil literature she has done and then she said she glorifies with the same spirit durga devi also ganesha also kartike also basically you have to give her the topic that's all huh? neither she said then i said okay okay now we understand now huh? you know <laughs> this is this is what makes iskon devotees different from many other people in iskon you may see that people may not be very scholarly but people have a staunch faith in you know the way propada started us about ananya bhakti na huh? yeah and now and even a very average devotee in iskon also cannot be cheated very easily they know very easily they know demigods immediately they will say huh? you know you may say they are neophyte and everything yeah they may be neophyte but at least they are holding on to krishna at least firmly correct no on the other hand somebody may say i am not a neophyte i am very advanced in knowledge but what's the use of your knowledge you are putting uh, you know uh, two legs and two hands in four boats huh? where will you go in your life huh? so therefore many times in pune once we had this uh, uh, yashoda krishna you know past time and covered boys and krishna in the forest of raj you know so one uh, group of Uh, bharatanatyam girls came and performed there were about there were about 20 of them the kind of performance vrindavan leela they put up you know our bhakta all the devotees sitting in the audience many were moved to tears huh? the way nishada krishna they acted and all very nicely and gopis came and acted everything so at the end of which i was telling who oh, all these girls can become devotees immediately huh? they are like ready made devotees i was telling uh, i was a president it was way back in uh, i think 1999 or 2000 i think so after that they they called me to stage to give them prizes so i gave them all prizes and i took the mic and i said you all performed such amazing dance on vrindavan uh, leela and the all our devotees heart are very touched so we request you please come every sunday to our temple we have nice classes going on you know if any of you want to chant we can give you free japa malas now you got prabhupad book now please read prabhupad books take japa mala come every sunday Uh, become devotees and these are three four matajis you can connect with them huh? and you connect with them and you all are already natural krishna's devotees i told them huh? you can easily pick up and they asked me prabhu we have a request this right what is it can we make one small announcement they asked i said yes they took the mic and they announced about their kalakshetra they have no we are coming from this particular kalakshetra and we are ready to perform dances in different places and if any of you wish to call us you can go to this website where you'll get more details this is our youtube channel they said and after they said thank you thank you for the opportunity you gave us in janmashtami and that is the first and last time i saw them and they never showed up and once i told mon mataji mataji why don't you call and follow them up she said whenever i call them they are asking if there is any dancing opportunity call us otherwise don't waste our time that means they are only dancers and they also do shiva tandav they do bhadrakali tandav hmm? they do different kinds of thing they are basically what cultural people uh, therefore prabhupada writes in that uh, mumukshava gora rupan next was i think 1 to 24 1 to 25 if you read prabhupada is saying that that uh, many of these people are actually arts poetry science philosophy and all the, those who do they are mostly in mode of passion prabhupada writes in that purport because these people actually do for different different demigods and they are not uh, even though they may do krishna's past times very attractively uh, 
you know by that you can benefit because when you are a devotee you see those things you you are seeing from you know krishna point of view so you can benefit but they were they don't benefit huh they may just do cultural for them uh, if you call to los angeles in america to perform dance they will come running huh? they will say, we go to any part of the world we can perform but tell them to dance one round of harikshan they won't do and this is what makes the devotee devotees of krishna is gone very very special in iskan every devotee is agreeing to chant how many rounds is not nothing like in in pune there is one place called uh, sadashiv pet pakka brahmans huh? pakka kattar brahmans you say na that area is filled with brahmans but if you go there and give your japamala to one fellow and make him chant one round of hare krishna even if you stand upside down they won't do it huh? yeah. yeah if you beg them they won't do it and that is how my respect for devotees shot up increased huh? i said in iskan even if a devotee is completely illiterate they deserve to be respected because they have already come to the stage where they have faith in the lord to chant 16 rounds not an ordinary thing it's not an ordinary thing uh, that's why it says te pus tapas te jhus krishna rasasna rarya brahman churnam gnanti iti what that was aho bat shapacho to gariyan yajyah vagre vartate nam tubhyam ते पुस्तपस्ते जिहुबुस्तुरार्यामानुरनामग्रणंतीयतेस्तुरार्यामानुरनामग्रणंतीयतेस्तुरार्यामानुरनामग्रणंतीयतेस्तुरार्यामानुरनामग्रणंतीय
This is very, very important. You have seen this rubber band uh, well, ball, you have seen that. If you hold the rubber band and throw the ball, it will come back to your hand. Like that, the disciples' control should be with the Guru. Huh? Like we are, we the sense of belonging to the Guru Parampara means what? You know, just as a wife is chased to the husband, huh? in the same manner, we belong to the Gaudiya Sampradaya and we have to be loyal. Our respectability for the Acharyas has to be high. Hmm? For example, when uh, when the, you know, Ritvikism came in India, one of the criticisms some other Ritvik people were doing was that all these uh, Western uh, people have come into India and they have fallen down, some of them, and because of which, you know, our Iskhan got a bad reputation. Huh? So they were criticizing the Western sadhus, but there are many Western sadhus who, who never fell down. What about them? Look at His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Maharaj, look at His Holiness Bhaktivika Swami Maharaj, look at His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj. Huh? You know, you can uh, look at many of the people who came from the West and who stayed in India. Huh? And they have spent more than 55 years now. And they didn't fall. So if you label all the Western sadhus and lump them in one box, then you become offender. Correct, no? Because it is true that the Western world ambience is very polluted. Hmm. People who are born in that land and it's very difficult for them to control the senses. But many of the names that I am taking, these people came to India at a very early stage. <laughs> when they were young, 19 or 20 or 22 or something, and they stayed all through. So you can't count them as Westerners. Huh? They have grown in India, and they know the Indian culture more than you and me also. They have gone to, like Zolan Bhaktivika Swami has written a book on the culture of India also, correct? No? Huh? Glimpses of? Ah, traditional Indian life. Huh? And Zolan Jayadat Swami Maharaj, I heard he has walked 20,000 miles in India, in Padayatra. Huh? So he has walked with the Padayatra when he was in the early days here. And you can see how strong they are. And they are all born in the West. Huh? He's on Giriraj Maharaj. Uh, he's on Jayadut Maharaj. All these people. So uh, it's not that like just like people compare the Indian breed cow and the American breed cow. Huh? Similarly, they compare the Indian, you know, our Indian sannyasi. Oh, he's a Madhva sannyasi. He's a Sri Vaishnava sannyasi. You know, they are very great and look at our Iskhan Sanyasi. As if, you know, Iskhan Sanyasi are not of high standard. But they have, imagine, 55 years of their life they have given, even though they are born in the West. Huh? So, we can, we can, we can understand, it's not an ordinary th thing, huh? For somebody born in the West, to leave the comforts of the West and live in an equatorial country, like this, which is a hot country, huh? you know, staying here, tolerating the uh, different type of culture. See, if you are in India, you are IT engineer for about 5-10 years. Then you go to America, you will never want to come back. Because the roads are very smooth. Uh, you know, commutation is very, very smooth. You know, there are aeroplanes are like PMT bus here. You can very, people go from place to place in aeroplanes. And the houses are very big and then lot of gardens outside and everything. You know, but they are leaving that comfort and coming to a country where roads are so horrible. Huh? Here, Dabba roads, you know, so many holes here and there. And the vehicles are dangerous and they are, many of the Western body devotees, they travel in this tum tum in Vrindavan and, uh, and go to the temple, Krishna Balram temple. You, you can see how the rickshaw topples. India people drive rickshaws like this, huh? like they've seen that. And these poor guys from the Western world are coming here. How much is Shraddha they should have? Correct? No? How many of you feel if you are born in America, for you to come to a country like this, you will think twice? Correct? No? whether to go or not. But they not only came here, they stay. One thing they understood, the country may have many problems physically, but spiritually it is great. Correct, <laughs> no? India's spiritual substance is the best. So they have stayed here. So rather than adore them, admire them, uh, to find fault to them just because, to label them for the skin they have. So that means we have Dehatma Buddhi. Huh? So it is our bodily consciousness that makes us criticize those people. Hmm? It's very, very... So, those people who criticize, that's how they become Mahaparadis. Eh? Those who criticize such souls. Eh? Even those who fell, apparently, I can, personally I consider them like Abhimanyu. Eh? Because Abhimanyu had to be used by Yudhishthira Maharaj in the battle. Eh? Because if Yudhishthira Maharaj was to be protected, Abhimanyu had to be sent. So Abhimanyu went in, he knew how to enter Chakra Vyuha, he, he didn't know how to come out. Uh, he was a young lad. And he was attacked by seven Maharatis simultaneously. 
although he was a single lad he was just 16 16 years old he was ready to lay down his life for the protection of the pandavas in the same manner in the early days when propa in 1965 when he started many of the sanya sanyasi gave to people who were 19 years old huh? and those who fell but even those who fell many of them like brahman and the prabhu or you know or uh, hari shauri prabhu and all these people never uh, uh, left the attachment and affection they had for prabhu uh, shyam sundar prabhu and all you see huh? even now their eyes will well up in tears if you tell them to speak about prabhu huh? and they have written books also many of them that means the affection for prabhupad is not affected although they may have found they might have found the sanyas ashram a little difficult because they were living in the western ambience also correct now so they didn't have ambience like in india and the culture like in india so we should be grateful to them all of you think for a moment if you were in 1965 would you have connected with this con and prabhupad i really doubt huh? because you know, at that time somebody is criticizing them or them and all that you know you know some uh, there are drug addicted hippies huh? and they are the early day followers you know very unlikely that the indian therefore abroad only parmaj gopalakrishna maharaj connected he was in montreal canada he could see that prabhupad is gold huh? what prabhupad is giving is pure and he exactly adopted the same mood in his life gopalakrishna maharaj and prabhupada also noticed the indians are not coming much westerners are coming to his movement there but this is one indian boy prabhupada told them to take uh, special care of him and gave him the hand over the bbbt to him he had a very deep faith in prabhupada so if we were at that time i really doubt how many of us may want to join prabhupada because we would only want to join a movement which is very you know we are very confident of its authenticity and its prestige and name and reputation and goodwill and all that correct no yeah but the american boys and girls who gave their life we have to adore them for that because they were christians or jews correct no for them to give up that and take to a sanatan dharma religion another that that is also a big switch over correct no for us it's not switch over we knew krishna even before coming to this con but they for them give up give that up and come to this it's not an easy thing think about that you know so therefore when you have that respect and adoration then uh, you have the right map with that right map and gratitude you know then our behavior will be in line with that imagine uh, a sanyasi comes or somebody comes how do you deal with them they may be western bodied huh? if i have some wrong skewed you know misconstrued understandings of them then i may there may be some brahmans in india they may say they may not take them very seriously huh? so therefore it is due to their own misconception correct so what, what do you think who you are huh? that makes you do the sadachar through your mouth and body accordingly that was the point i was stressing today mm-hmm. so we will uh, conclude with this today mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, we will continue in the next session ha huh? shri prabhupada ki kar bhakta vrinda ki you got the notes also you can go through the notes and come i think correct no they can go through the notes uh, uh, and it will be easy actually we have spent some considerable time in our sadachar thing next time we come we can spend some time on sadhana i think exemplary sadhana we will spend some time on that one thing i didn't spend time on that is about priti lakshanam huh? uh i will check whether it is there there was one very good uh, talk uh, on priti lakshanam chapa chapa the counselors had come hmm? if it is there i will i will tell you you can see that just one minute part 1 and 2 is there okay shall we which one is the chapati one which i spoke to the acm chapati no so the latest one is it this one i think this is the one i think huh 
That is? Is Bangalore? Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vidamsha. Is Bangalore? Not in. This is guest house, I think, right? Shai is embarrassing. Ah, see here? Correct, this is the one, I think. Oh, it's Bangalore, Bangalore, yeah. Okay, it's Bangalore, it is Bangalore. This is not the one. Actually, I did one for the uh, Chopati counselors, no? That was very good. That was... Huh? Ah, no, you can check. It's called a ACM. Please only. It's called, this is the PPT. You know, probably I'll share this PPT. Yes. See, ACM Chopati Preeti Lakshanam, Art of Interpersonal It's very, very beautiful pastime of Krishna and Sudama, you know. Yes. Very, very beautiful. So, this will give them very nice and this thing. You see, Shivaji this is the one, PPT, see here. Yes. This is the one. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. I'll share the PPT also with you. Church Bo, see, it's saying get started, it's saying. See here. Get started? Yeah, so you can share that PPT. So he will give you a project. Huh? So you can, that also you can share with you what is. So, the, you know the pre election part, you know, and then dealing with the Prabhupada and seniors, well, elaborately we have spoken, and culture of trust we have spoken. This much is good enough for Sadhachar, I think. And then next time, let us do on sadhana, chanting and reading, hearing, we will do that. Huh? Shri Prabhupada ki jai.